Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you very much uh, for joining us uh, this afternoon uh, for today's webinar, which is for essential coaching and mentoring skills, skills for strong leadership. Uh, my name's uh, Dan Sanders, and I'm going to be the moderator for today's session. Um, so before we kick off, uh, and I'll hand you over to the presenter, just a quick couple of housekeeping points. Um, if any of you have any technical issues or difficulties throughout the session today, please just pay, make a note of them into the chat box. And one of our team is going to be on hand and be able to, uh, to, be able to assist and help you out and have a, a separate chat with you if, if required. Um, and secondly, um, we do very much like to make our webinars very live and interactive. And so to, during today's one, we've actually got three polls that are going to be running. So a pop-up sort of box will appear on your screen. So please do engage with us. And, and if you can respond when possible, then that would be fantastic. Um, and finally, um, we're going to have a Q&A session at the end towards the end, the last sort of 10 to 15 minutes. Um, we're gonna put some questions to the presenter. If you could please throughout the session, put some questions into the chat box. Um, I will then be keeping a close monitoring eye on, on within, within the chat box. Um, and I'll be collating those questions in. And then when we come to the Q and A session, I will be putting these to the presenter at that point. Anyway, um, those are all the housekeeping points that we need to go through. Um, other than that, I think really now I want to hand you over to uh, one of our key associates for uh, IMECI and um, over to Phil Slater. Hello, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. It's great to see so many of you connecting, particularly just for, for today those of you that are in the UK, because we have such a beautiful day covering most of our, our island. So it's great that you've found the time to connect. But of course, it's wonderful to, to see and hear from, 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 from you from wherever you are. So I shall be your presenter. So thank you to Dan for, for, for the moderation, but also thank you to Kirsty, who we won't hear from, but she does a lot of work in the background to, to bring these webinars to life for everybody. So thanks to Dan and to Kirsty. Just a little bit about me, of course, I'm your presenter. Um, I've been operating as a learning and development professional for around about 25 years, a little over 25 years, actually, working um, across many industries um, and operating in personally, you know, actu actually in more than 20 countries, but, but also working with 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 employees, with individuals from from all over the world, a big part of the my role is obviously the facilitation of sessions like this, but also coaching. So recognizing the value of building relationships, creating a rapport, um, showing empathy, um, not only listening but actually showing that you are listening. How all of that creates a deeper relationship from which a more effective coaching or mentoring type relationship can, can can take place. And we're going to explore some of the kind of key components of we as we go through that over the next 45 minutes or so. So we'll start with a quote. Okay. And it's about recognizing the power of the of the how we do things. All right. There are many frameworks that you can that we can utilize to to, to build effective coaching relationships. You may have heard of some of them. There is the grow model, there is the clear model. Uh, there is an ask model that, that we can use. So that's the framework. But what we really want to, to enhance our, the experience that our coachee, the person being coach, has is to make sure we develop those skills, those behaviours that really help us to connect, to have um, the kind of relationship from which meaningful coaching and mentoring conversations can take place. So that's where our focus will be over the next 45 minutes or so. In terms of the topics that we're, that we're covering, um, the value of coaching and mentoring, some of you may be responsible or, or feel that you can take a responsibility for making the business, co business case for introducing more coaching and mentoring in your workplace. So we're gonna give you some kind of data um, that you can use to potentially position that argument. 
as with any relationship personal or professional trust is absolutely vital it's a foundation stone of a relationship um and in particular um the coaching relationship if you don't have trust um it will be very difficult to draw out those 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 suggestions those those questions those opinions that can help both the coach and coachee move both parties towards helping the person who's been coached achieve their particular goal or goals the value of curiosity all right because curiosity inspires and stimulates us to ask those questions so therefore to get more from the person that's being coached but also it's again it's about those connections all right if i if i if i'm showing that i'm curious that i'm interested in a person not only being interested but showing i'm interested through that my natural curiosity we connect and we form that deeper relationship from which more successful coaching can take place and then at the last the, the, the towards the end we're going to look at one particular skill it's something that we all think we do every day and most of us will do it successfully most of the time but just kind of reminding ourselves of the real value of this particular skill in anything that we do but particularly when we're applying it to a coaching and mentoring relationship and then towards the end we'll have a look about how we how we might apply and measure ourselves or measure others in terms of how successful that they have been as dan said ask your questions utilize the chat make some comments share your stories that will all that will help us to create a learning environment upon this webinar it is being recorded um, so the slides and obviously what you hear me saying will be available to you at some point post web web webinar. But feel free to kind of interact as as we go. That will that will that will help us enormous, enormously. So in terms of what we're trying to trying to achieve, as you can see on the on the slides, it's important that we hopefully we all get something from the content from the forty five minutes and then the question and answering session. But what's really important is what we do with it next. So do we use it to inspire ourselves to carry out some more coaching and mentoring conversations, perhaps to stimulate our desire for more knowledge? OK, in 45 minutes, we're giving you quite a high level, but there is much more to this um, to recognize where your strengths are all right, and to build on those strengths. All right. We should always recognize the, and value the things that we're good at often. Where, where our natural default goes to is the bits where we recognize that we're not so good at and we work very hard at developing those and that's great all right but we shouldn't do that at the kind of the uh with, without valuing the strengths that we already have and and and, the, and what they will bring to the coaching and mentoring relationships that we that, that we have um opportunity looking for opportunities to coach and mentor all right using our using our skills using our behaviors using the additional learning that hopefully we'll take we'll, we'll, we'll embark upon post this webinar and, and and it's absolutely about application none of us will be perfect first time you know it is about practicing it's about getting some feedback from the person that you're coaching or mentoring getting some feedback from your peer group self-assessing reflecting on what you do well remember building upon those strengths but also recognizing those areas that perhaps that you can that you can you you would benefit from some from from some further development so at the first of our polls just to kind of get a sense of where we're at all right none of the polls are too too challenging it's just to get to get an in, you know a little bit of information about about where we're at as a as a as a webinar group a webinar population this afternoon so you'll see the first poll that Kirsty will share and it's just to give us a bit a bit of an answer about what, where you're currently at so obviously you can see choose number choose one I am you are a coach it's something that you do as a fundamental part of your role same for mentor if you do both then take number three if you currently do neither that's fine okay it's great to, great to, that you're starting your coaching and mentoring journey in this way um, and then just an opinion one five if you think every conversation is an opportunity to inform the coach and mentor this is how you see it all right then then that would be the selection that you that you take so so input into the poll let us know where you're at currently and then we shall move on
Okay. All right. All right. So there are three polls. That was the first of our three. All right. So it's great to get get the information from you. Um, and where you're at, and, and and also use that to reflect. Okay. You know, if 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 you if you're currently neither, but you're on this webinar for a reason, it's about okay. That's my action. It's my starting point to take some of this information and do something with it. If you're already a coach, what additional tool or piece of information might you get today that you can use? positively on your in your ongoing coaching relationships so for many of you hopefully perhaps because you you because you've joined this webinar you already recognize the value of coaching and mentoring um, as an individual opportunity for somebody either being coached or mentored or somebody building their career or building that kind of part of their managerial and leadership toolkit where they embark upon managing, coaching and mentoring relationships, but also for the organization, for the sustainability of the organization and the engagement of its employees. All right, so many of you will recognize that, but for this next little section, we're just gonna give you a little bit of kind of um, flavor to that, perhaps some data that you, could, that you can use to kind of satisfy yourself that you are correct, but also perhaps to make that business case. All right, so you can see another quote, the quote being coming from the International Coaching Federation, which is one of the leading bodies um, that, that kind of, that, that supports coaches all over the world and they offer accreditations and, and lots of additional information in, in the world of coaching um, and you can see the quote there but the kind of the key words to, to pull out is this bit about partnering it's it's about relationships it's about building relationships building deep relationships building relationships that can provide success for those people involved in the relationships but also that we're where we can see how that success impacts on our team or our department on our organization all right it can um, help to tell a story of the successes that we're having within an organ with that we're having within the organization um, and help the relationships to deepen and therefore sustain sustain success over 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 a lengthy period all right because of the the nature of the kind of questions that we ask in coaching and mentoring and how the conversation drives us to think about solutions or to think about options as to how a particular goal might be realized it allows us to get creative if the relationship has it has trust we ask questions in the right way um, we show empathy then it stimulates that kind of trust and that and that confidence in each other that we can we can be a little off the wall and we can think about solutions that perhaps we might not otherwise have, have have done and then of course when we use those solutions and they are successful or even if they were not they're not we have a story to tell in our organization to our peer group um, about the learning that we've been through and how we might apply that how we might apply that wider and of course it's about helping people to achieve their potential all right and when we have people who feel like they can achieve their potential then that drives engagement, which links to productivity and links to the business links, links to business results. So you can see, and a, a number of these slides have a lot of content in, so that's kind of reaffirms my message about the slides will be available to you as well afterwards. Um, but you can see a, a number of benefits, and of course there's lots of on this slide, but there are many more um, benefits of coaching that, could, that, that individuals and organisations can. Can benefit from by introducing a coaching and mentoring culture and many of you will be familiar and, and, and comfortable and agree with many of these already all right one of the things that that's really important for people in organizations at the moment is this work-life satisfaction this work-life balance all right so utilizing coaching helps people to become more effective and therefore reduces perhaps their the, the stress that comes with with being overworked because they're able to be more effective in a shorter space of time because they're building knowledge, skills and behaviours, which of course enables, hopefully supported by the organisation, a greater work-life balance, which again, builds sustainable performance and if for individuals and then sustainable performance for the organisation, all right? Helps people to feel that they can, con to, to con they can contribute more effectively to the team and the business. It also, of course, not only helps them, more than it helps them feel, it helps them to actually do that. But we know in terms of personal resilience and well-being that people like to feel 
that they are making a contribution, all right? Knowing that when they come into work every day, their knowledge, their skills, the behaviors that they display are making a positive contribution is a real link towards um, employee well-being and resilience for the individual, but also to help drive and build a resilient organization. And coaching is one tool that helps us to do that. It's a communication tool. Communication is powerful. All right. It's the it's the process that helps us to build those relationships, to de deepen those relationships. It's often the oil that keeps the engine of the organization running. We know what can happen if we don't do it as effectively as we might. All right. But we also know and realize the benefits of, of doing it. So and again, coaching is a tool that, that enables us to do that. Increasing engagement, we talked already. We know every piece of research out there tells us that if, if we have employees, teams, organizations that are more engaged, that generally increases productivity, which has a direct link towards the business bottom line, whatever, whatever that might be. And it's a it's a development tool, of course. Coaching and mentoring are both development tools, so they they contribute towards the development of individual individuals and them being able to be more effective and to increase their personal performance. So you can see a stat here, you know, the, you know, the research from the, from the ICF, again, the International Coaching Federation, 80% of people coached at work reported an increase in self-confidence. All right. If we are more self-confident, we are more willing to, 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 to be, to try things, to do things, to put ourselves forward. If we have a culture of that in an organization, then that's going to, that's going to help improve performance and to build a sustainable business or, or team or, or a sustainable relationship that an individual might have with a particular, with a particular business. You can see from this one in terms of the impact, um, research in the UK by Dale Carnegie, um, relating to, to the fact that coaching builds engagement, they found that companies with highly engaged workforces outperform their peers by 140% in earnings per share. All right, so quite significant. And then Gallup, a Gallup study showed that where employees are motivated, engaged at work, generally speaking, profitability increases by 20% sales productivity by 20% and output quality by 40%. Okay. So these are key metrics or key results that can help us to, to, to make a business case for this should we need to, but also tell us if we're involving ourselves in coaching and mentoring that we're doing the right thing. It's a really positive thing for ourselves, for the people we're coaching and mentoring and also for the organization. So again, some more information about return and investment. So again, using the ICF as our source, 86% of organizations saw, saw a return and investment in their coaching in, engagement, all right? So whatever the metric they put in place, be it financial, be it engagement related, whatever it, it, it might be, 86% saw, saw a return and investment made. So it's very powerful and very significant. And particularly when we're talking at the senior level, those Board, board members or executives who, who work in organizations or just senior senior members in the in the business 96 percent nearly all of those people who said they'd used an ex executive coach took so much positivity from the experience that they said they would repeat the process again all right what's really additionally powerful about that is we know in organizations that our leaders are setting the tone from the top the behaviors that they that they show as a result of their coaching or the stories that they can tell about the, the benefits they receive from having a coach will disseminate naturally down the organization and help us to build that coaching culture and therefore uh, help us to achieve the results that we've talked about on some of the some of the previous slides. So how, how do we do this? All right. First thing is about that decision to actually do it. OK, so, OK, after this after this webinar or next week at some time i'm going to seek out a coaching opportunity um and i'm going to i'm going to practice some of my skills or i'm going to try to to get some more development or actually i've got something i could be coached on i'm going to seek out somebody either an established coach or even somebody who's looking to practice and build their skills and actually do this all right think about where you're at think about your current level of skill and what and what you can do with that skill as it is where you might need to build your skill think about your personality and 
and the kind of coaching relationship that you that you think that you will be able to start off with and achieve significant results from from the outset make sure you give and receive feedback you know so we're building our skill and we're making sure that we're working really importantly it's a conversation is coaching and mentoring so make it make it short it says it, the bit the bit at the end of that of that statement is ask more questions asking open questions help helps us to get the information that with the, the the coach and the coachee or the mentor and the mentee can use to build their relationship but absolutely critically make sure that you are listening all right not only that you are hearing but you are showing that you are listening and be present all right this is not an add-on it's not something that you do while you're sending an email to the boss or why while you're thinking about a client meeting that you've got later in the day a coaching relationship has to be has to be how you have to be present to make it work to have that connection and to build that trust so you need to be physically there but you need to also be mentally and emotionally available to your to the people that you are coaching and mentoring so think about how you make that happen all right so if you know that you're not going to be able to do that don't carry out a coaching session wait until you can otherwise the value of the relationship and the trust and everything that goes along with it that there is a risk to that we don't we don't want that from the outset of our of our coaching relationships so we've talked and we mentioned it already the trust word is so important you know in any relationship as i said earlier in personally or professionally trust is so important all right some of us are able to to kind of choose to trust from the outset all right many or others of us have to have to work at that little bit or has to something has to happen in the relationship the relationship has to develop before that trust is properly built um and once we have it or once we or once we begin that process of building it we have to keep doing that and we have to keep doing the right things um displaying the right kind of behaviors to ensure that that trust is maintained because if it's not as many of us you will know Trust is hard enough to get in the first place, but if we lose it, it's very difficult to get it back if that trust is broken. So it's a, it's an absolute foundation of what we need in, in a coach to be successful in a coaching and mentoring relationship. So just for a little bit of fun, you just make it a bit more interactive and no one's going to kind of hold you to this and no one's going to kind of come and say, why did you say this? I'm certainly not going to on the webinar, so don't, so don't worry. But just in th to think about how, how people see you, how people perceive you. And you may want to get some feedback from your from your colleagues or from your friends or from your family. But tell me how much you think your people, your team trust you. Ten being very high down to one who where they, you don't think they trust you at all. And that might that might be, by the way, it's not necessarily you're criticizing yourself. It might be perhaps you have a brand new team or you've moved into a brand new the business has evolved so much that 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 help you know there's, there's an impact on the trust as well so it isn't you know we're not necessarily going oh gosh i'm terrible i'm one it, there, there could be all sorts of other reasons behind that and i'm seeing if i look i see somebody with an 11 that's fantastic you know so that's that's great and most of us are most of us we often as we often do with this is is a uh, sevens and eights and set and seven so most of us are saying that we that we generally we feel that our people trust us which is great i would always and perhaps you are doing this i would also I would also have some conversations with my people to make sure that how I how trustworthy I feel I am um, is aligned to to how my people see it because we have different perspectives we see the world through different filters. I make you run a communication and influence course where we look a lot about how people's different perspectives in the world of communication and how sometimes what we think we've said or what we think we've shown how it's interpreted in a totally different way and of course we think we're displaying ourselves or showing ourselves or using the words that gives a high level of trust but sometimes it's useful just to check that people are seeing seeing that in the same in the same way so most of us are, are, are ranking ourselves above above five anyway which is which is which is which is good and then just in this one again just to kind of keep it interactive um why do you think you know and i've said some of this already but but anything that you can add maybe your personal stories why do you think trust is an important part of of the relationship in terms of in terms of coaching and mentoring add any responses that you've got to 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 the chat we of course on the next slide have some some answers to this but but 
I'll uh, I'll see if you've got any, any any of your own examples for a second. Still seeing the ratings coming in. Yeah, I think that's a really good one. Um, that you know, that's that that's that's safe that that's safety. I think one of the things that you need to work hard at as a coach or a mentor is to build that safe environment. And that's not just about the physical environment; it's about the relationship that people feel safe and comfortable. And of course, trust comes from that. Yeah, you can absolutely. Somebody, so I've just and they're coming through with quite quickly. So all of these are good many of these are very good so don't, don't say yours don't think it's because i don't think they're good it's because i they're going they're going through quite quickly um somebody i saw somebody say say we can't lead people that we that if we don't have trust i think that's right i think that's i think you know lead if you're a leader subordinate or a coach or a coachee or a mentor mentee you know they're in all of those kind of relationships in any kind of relationships there are foundations or pillars trust is one of them if you don't have it, it's really difficult to, to to really be as successful. Again, someone has put it to build an effective relationship. And yes, it's a foundation stone and many others. So thanks for, for inputting all of you, even if I didn't manage to, to read yours out there. And you can see, you know, just a, much of this has already been said. You know, it's it's a, it's the substance. It's a foundation of successful relationships. It's linked to openness. All right. If I'm going to be a coach. And I'm not considered to be open. All right. It's probably going to be quite a challenging relationship. It's we're probably not going to doesn't mean we might not. We might not get somewhere. All right. But it doesn't. It probably is probably minimizing or reducing the chances of success or certainly reducing the amount of success that we that we can have. It's about respect. All right. If we're looking to work because coaching and mentoring is, a, is often a, a collaborative conversation. It's about finding solutions um that we can take that that perhaps the individual being coach can take but supported by the coach or sometimes solutions act solutions that both people have actions within to enable the goal to be achieved and if there isn't respect there doesn't mean it doesn't happen because there could be hierarchy at play or there could be some kind of command and control but that's not as fulfilling and it's not as sustainable as a, as a mutually respectful relationship our ability, and for some of us, I know we find this hard, but our ability to show some kind of vulnerability, to show, to be able to tell the stories of where, where, where we found things difficult. It's a great way of showing empathy. And it's and with empathy comes that trust that, 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 we, that we've talked about in terms of what we need to be su successful. If trust is not there, people will be much more withdrawn, less um, willing to share the more that we share, the more that we can we have to work with in the coaching and mentoring relationship, and the more the greater the chance we have successful. So continuously working to make sure you have a level of conversation where that trust can take place is a is a is a, is a great thing. Most of us as human beings, all right, you know, we want that anyway. We want people to feel that they they can trust us and they can respect us. So we, we go about our 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 lives not always conscious of it but trying to build those kind of relationships but there's always opportunities to dot the i's or cross the t's look for marginal gains so just be thinking about your relationships particularly those that you might be involved or could be involved in the future in a coaching and mentoring relationship and how you how you build that relationship and, and understand their values and they understand your values so you can build that trust it will give you a better starting point from which to be successful over over the longer run so again qualities of coach many more than, than are on this slide all right but remember it's about building on your own strengths there are frameworks we can use okay but what we want as a as a coach or a mentor is authenticity don't try and be somebody that you are not because people sense that or if they already know you they will see that obviously OK, and that and that actually can can erode away and nag away at their, their feelings of respect or trust for you because they think you're you're wearing a different hat or pretending to be somebody you think you're not. So think about how you can you can make coaching and mentoring effective, but utilizing your own style. It absolutely has to be about the person being coached or the or the, or the person being mentored first. All right. It's great. And, and there's nothing wrong with the person who's doing the coaching or the mentoring getting something from it, either personally for their own self-worth, 
recognizing that maybe they're building a team member to increase their knowledge, skill or behavior that will, that will help them as the manager or leader of the team or to help the organization. There's nothing wrong with that, but it absolutely has to be start with the person being coached or being mentored first um, and recognize about how, how, we ha how we do that in the relationship, how we build the trust, but also as managers and leaders, perhaps how you set that tone in the business or help set that stone tone where we create a culture where that openness can exist it's not easy it's not something we can say business as of monday morning we're going to have an open organization everybody everybody's going to be open and we're all going to have a great coaching relationship it doesn't work like that this isn't a tap we turn on right? organizations will be in different places but we have to try and move move the dial a little bit it creates it cases like that you know it cases opportunities to role model all right so if we're talking and, and helping people to to understand the value of certain behaviors in a coaching relationship and how they should go about it we can help that individual but we can also we can also again help the culture positively of the business by practicing what what we what we preach what what what, what the coach might preach it helps you to expand your own at home horizons you'll see a different view of how things can be done all right if we're looking to be collaborative and look for collaborative solutions in a relationship, in a coaching or mentoring relationship, then we're potentially working with people who see the world differently from us, and therefore their way of doing things or the solutions that they come up with might be different from yours, okay? And recognizing that and seeing the value in it and perhaps trying to implement some of them yourself, you know, expands your horizons. A good coach can recognizes the value of rapport and trust and everything we talked about earlier. And is able to do that quickly so those open questions those those showing that we're listening showing empathy um you know where we actions come out of the conversation not only committing to the action but actually doing those actions telling the story in a respectful way where we're respecting confidentiality and, and talking about the successes is all part of building a rapport that helps us to be much more successful um and and you know it's habit building leadership is also is often about building good habits um and so is co and coaching as a leadership tool is the same building those habits around around questioning and, and showing empathy and all those other things i mentioned before is a real quality that that natural coaches provide we can all work on this all right if we're not full-time coaching coaches or mentors it's just something we we think will be, we can add to our toolkit to make us more effective all right wherever we're at okay our our kind of objective i guess from from this from a session like today and whatever development you take beyond this is to is to is to say okay i want to get better at this bit i want to build on my strength in this bit all right so wherever you are at, it's just looking for that continuous improvement even coaches that that have been at the top of their game and i've worked with some of these for 20 25 years what keeps them at the top of their game is that they never stop learning they never stop learning not only from from additional research that's out there or additional development, but learning from the relationships and the coaching relationships that, 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 that they have. And I talked already about the kind of the power of curiosity. You might remember back to, to when you were a child or maybe some of you have, have got children, maybe young children now or have had young children and those questions that they ask. All right, like, you know, the way that they see the world and the and the questions that they will ask and then the follow up questions and that, that natural curiosity that children have that 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 perhaps maybe adults don't lose it. And some adults certainly never lose it. That, that, that curiosity is there and we see it. We see it all the time. But perhaps they 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 kind of suppress it a little bit in, in favor of kind of, you know, going with the flow or, or, or thinking or maybe how they lose their confidence about asking a particular question because they may be they maybe think that somebody will think less of them or it shouldn't be the kind of question they should be asking as an adult or, a, or a, within a position in the organization. But actually, if we can if we can break down those those kind of barriers that we often put in place for ourselves, the power of curiosity in a coaching relationship, you know, can't be understated because we're asking those questions that helps us to understand more. But we're, because we're asking the questions, it's showing that we are interested and therefore building those building the building the, the depth of relationship and the trust and everything else that we 
that we that we talk with that we talk through you know the value of just of asking the question maybe asking the silly question or the question that's a bit off the wall these are the things that break down the, the ceilings the glass ceilings in relationships but break down the glass many of you will know you know in the worlds that you operate in you know breaking down the glass ceilings around what's possible in in a particular profession or a particular business or a particular or a particular culture curiosity is one of the kind of the one of the key elements of that um and again in terms of a business case some 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 facts that that show the the value of kind of encouraging curiosity and again we don't we don't encourage curiosity by saying to our people i want you to be curious okay we could do all right but what you can also do is you can talk about the power of curiosity. You can recognize when curiosity is taking place in your team and give positive feedback. You can be curious and to role model that behavior. Remember, as a leader and a manager, particularly, and some of you are maybe not in those positions just yet, but perhaps will be in the future. But even as a peer, you know, showing that we're being curious and people recognizing and seeing how a how a relationship might develop or might deep deepen as a result of our curiosity can really kind of help to embed that as a behavior within a, within an within an, an organization um and also we, we we're, we're making we're, we're getting the detail all right we're getting to the detail we're getting to the nub of it we're, we're, we're challenging our beliefs we're challenging our potentially our our biases and confirmation bias being the one that's mentioned on mentioned on the slide which helps us to reduce the number of errors that we might make. So another poll, uh, this time, as you can see, just in terms of where you assess your curiosity. One, being curious by nature. Two, need I need to get better at becoming cu more curious. I'm going to ask more questions. I'm going to, you know, use the right kind of body language, the right kind of tone to come across as more body language. Think about how you do it already. I ask good questions, but but I could look to build some of my other behaviors and skills. Maybe need to think about, okay, maybe you're good at some of it, but you need to reflect on this and see where you can improve and develop. And, and actually, that you know, actually, you know what? This is maybe an area if I'm if I'm shining, if I'm looking at myself in the mirror or shining a light on myself, I could do with some more training or support. So so the poll will be be made available and have an answer. And remember, no one's no one's holding any of your answers, you know, up, up to you and saying, "Why did you say this?" It's just, you know, how how you think in the moment, and and then maybe get you to reflect on your answer after the webinar and think about how you might, if it's if you, for example, if you've put that you need some more training on support on this, then then have a look at iMeki's website and have a look at the different, you know, soft skills or leadership courses or particularly communication and influencing that will help you with help you with help you with some of that. Okay, so we've talked already about this critical skill. We all, we all, we all think we do it well most of the time, but if, but then again, if we if we kind of really press the pause button and really reflect, do we listen as well as we we ought to all of the time? All right, because it isn't just as we know. If we really think about it, it isn't just about um, us hearing the words it's also in terms of the coaching and mentoring relationship it's showing that we've heard the words all right being active in our listening being present i can remember when i was a manager and leader where people would come and speak to me and i would be trying to kind of send an email at the same time and hopefully most of the time i was hearing and i might action what they said um but did the person walk away fully fully confident with that that I that I had heard now later when I did what they said they might oh yeah he did but it what their experience wasn't as positive as it might have been because I wasn't fully present I wasn't fully there when they were talking to me and sometimes for many people equally sometimes even more so important than what they need from what they're saying is this feeling that they will listen to and that has to be more full full fuller than kind of half an ear while I'm sending an email, particularly in a coaching relationship or a mentoring relationship. It's absolutely about showing active, you know, so repeating back, asking a follow-up question, 
eye contact, all of those kind of things, you know, we need to dial up a little bit to show that we're listening. So we hear correctly and action correctly, but also that we show and give confidence to, to the other person that they are being listened to and the, and, and the power of that feeling in terms of the, the, the sustainability of the relationship going forward. And here's a you know another a, a quote from 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 the the former president and of, of Christ of the corporation, um, you know talking about that we, we we sometimes do take listening for granted. We take it for ourselves and we take it in our organisations. You know most of us, will, you know will, uh, as adults, we 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 know we've learned, we know how to listen. We've learned how to listen. We know how our ears work. Okay, but actually there's more to it than that. Sometimes it's about choice. Sometimes it's about, OK, I know how, I know how to listen, but it's about making sure I apply it at the right time, in the right way, in the right kind of relationships and recognizing the importance of dialing that up, maybe all the time. But particularly for this webinar, when we're talking about coaching and mentoring relationships um, and this critical communication, effective communication point that a truly effective communication is a two way process. All right. And for that communication to really work. We have to have the person who has has received the message, however that message was received, um, they have to demonstrate their understanding in an appropriate way. Doesn't mean for every interaction you need to repeat back what's just been said because that just wouldn't wouldn't work. Sometimes that's necessary, but sometimes we we should ask a follow up question or or say what we're going to do about what's just been said to us, so we demonstrate our understanding, so we're being truly effective in in. In, in that part of our, our uh, part of the relationship and, and all that will bring to the coaching and mentoring relationship. So just so you know, in terms of someone, we think we're listening around, right? we think we're really good at it, but you can see from the research there that the average person hears between 20 and 30,000 words during a 24 hour period. The average number of words you're able to listen to is, rough, is roughly 450 people a minute. And people generally only remember about 17 to 25 percent of what they hear. OK, so you will know whether you, that's kind of you or maybe you're a little, you think you're a little bit better or maybe you think, oh, you know what, that's something I know I am. So what tools are at your disposal to make sure that you that you that you remember more of what you're hearing? Of course, we can make notes. All right. We can use recordings when we're operating from webinar. We can just make sure in those critical conversations of which coaching and mentoring is one where are absolutely fully present. So we're giving ourselves a greater chance of listening and remembering the key words or the key questions or the key, the key agreements that come out of that coaching relationship that we then action and show that we've act, show we've actioned to build on that relationship and to maintain that relationship as we as we move forward. So our last poll in terms of listening. So one being you're not the best listener. You try. OK, but you recognize you can you can develop. And then two, as you see, need to get better at listening. Definitely, no question. Um, it, again, it's not necessarily always your fault. We live in busy, we have busy lives and we're often working in busy environments and that can affect our listening. But just think about how it reflects. Think about the training and support you might get with this and then maybe what you might do post webinar in terms of having a look about what additional training and support that, that I may keep providing that area for you. Think about maybe if you've you've already recognized that and, and it's something you've been focusing on or something that you consider yourself to be to be good. So it's our last our last um poll of the of the of the day of the webinar. And thank you for, for uh contributing to these as well. It does it does help if, to, to to make the sessions feel a little bit more interactive and for us all to kind of recognize not only in terms of your own result and, and also what you've been putting in the chat, but to, so sometimes it gives people confidence when people say the same as them or, or, or share a story that, that 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 they've not shared, but they can, yeah, I can relate to that. Then it helps people give confidence to, to do something with this going forward. We may never know it if it's somebody who's made a comment from, from, from the other side of the world who you'll, who you'll never interact with again, but, but we sometimes inspire people without, with, without realizing it. So thank you for, for, for playing your part in these polls and in, in, in the in fully in the chat as well so it's one thing to have it but we need to make sure that we that we kind of assess and get some feedback from other people to make sure that we're having the right kind of impacts and there are some there are lenses that we could the, the lenses that we can use here to, to kind of assess ourselves. all right so we're thinking about ourselves. we're thinking about about what we did well what we what we didn't do so well what we can build on 
we think about the interactions that we're having within within the relationship and and, and get some feedback on how that's gone we think about the deliverables so if it's a coaching or mentoring we're often thinking about delivering and achieving a specific goal did we do that what benefit is it having on on the on the wider team relationship if it's an internal coaching relate or mentoring relationship wider than that what stories can we tell what um, successes can we see or potentially otherwise that we can continue to work on from our wider stakeholder base and then perhaps outside of the organization so so looking at the context and how it's how it and how it how it might have impacted wider than our organization and something like a pestle analysis that that, that we can use there if you're not familiar with pestle analysis have a look at it afterwards as a, as a kind of an action perhaps but for much more detail than i can give you now but pestle stands for political uh let me remember political economical um social technological legal and environmental and these are the kind of the, the, the areas from which we can from which we can we can kind of assess the contribution that we're making one coaching relationship on its own doesn't necessarily give us a lot to work with but if we're creating a coaching culture in an organization through role modeling and creating an environment that allows it potentially for some organizations and they can have a significant impact and all organizations could probably assess the impact that they're having on the on the wider on the wider world so be thinking be reflecting it's really important to take some of the learning from this webinar but take some of the take the learning from whatever other coaching interactions that you've had either coaching you already do or other development opportunities that you, you've had previously or intend to have in the future and think about how you transfer those into your your working lives into into your coaching and mentoring relationships so the actions that you need to take all right because that adds value to to, to the attending on this to attending these particular webinars and think about the support that you need to enable that within your own organizations or through the IMECI or through whoever it might be. And just so you know, I mentioned a few a few of the, 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 the additional support, the additional courses that you can get from, from IMECI. Um, communication influencing isn't on this list, but that, that perhaps is one to look at, but you can see some of the upcoming upcoming courses that are available to you from which some of the skills and behaviors we've talked about here will be transferable into those courses but there are also things on those courses that kind of may be specifically relating to building your your overall capabilities in, as a manager in terms of new engineering manager but absolutely will also enhance your ability to be an effective co coach or mentor moving forward in whatever however you choose to use it and then just a little bit of information about about if you're wanting to become professionally registered and how how you go about that remember that the recording with the slides if you need a bit, bit more information or to remind yourself of this will be available afterwards so that's it from me in terms of delivery of the webinar so thank you for listening we've got a little bit of time left for for me to hopefully answer any of your questions what i'll say at the outset is if i know the answer and you know I've been doing this for a long time, so hopefully I should know most of the answers. I'll answer it, all right? But I'm not going to, if if you ask, if one of you asks me that killer question, sometimes happens, and it's great, but I don't know the answer to, then what I will do is I'll commit to, 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 to going away and getting an answer getting an answer for you. But let's see where we, let's see where we get to. I'd rather than bluff my way through it, I'll just say that's a really great question. I, I would rather go away and research it, but let's see what we, what we have. So Dan, I, I think, has been collating the questions as we, as we go. Yes, uh, I have, Phil, and, and thank you very much for that webinar. Uh, that was really good. Um, so uh, thank you. Um, fascinating stuff there. So, um, yeah, uh, to be fair, actually, the attendees have, have, have been very uh, engaged in the chat box, which is really good to see. And there's uh, numerous questions have come through, Phil. So if you've got some time spare, um, yep. we, I'll try and get through as many of them as, as possible. Okay. Um, the first one actually is very interesting from David Henley. He says, how do you cope with a mentee who becomes too dependent on support and coaching? Yes, it's a good question, David. Thank you. And it's one of the things that actually that, that we talk about in the in the in the mentoring course that on IMECI about that, how, how we make sure that the, the relationship doesn't become one of dependence. And the way 
the way to do it at the outset when the relationship begins is we go through this process of contracting so we and, and, and so we talk about what what we're trying to achieve you know the logistics about how and when we might meet what kind of conversations that we might that we might have but also importantly we're talking about we're talking about boundaries so we're also talking about the when and where in terms of what when you can come to me as your coach or your mentor and when you can't but also about when at what point we're moving from this kind of this tell so yes at the outset maybe certainly in mentoring not so much coaching you come to me as your coach or mentor for the answer i give it to you and then off you go but we're really clear at the outset about what we're trying to get to here particularly in coaching because coaching rely, relies relies on this mutually collaborative conversation that we're seeking you to show me as a measure of success in this coaching relationship that that you have that you that you have the answers or at least part of the answers and you have the confidence to try it so if you've had those conversations at the outset and if it's already midway through the relationship that that's it's a little bit more challenging but it doesn't mean you can't go back and sort of recontract through the through uh, as to as how's the relationship should look, look like going forward but you can talk about okay the tell we need to move away a little bit from the tell or from the you relying on me as for all of the answers or to tell you what decisions to make to why, how we'll measure the success of this relationship is when we move away. So you come to me with some of the solutions or some of the or some of the actions that you take, and it drives a different kind of conversation. It can be hard because one of the, I suppose, downsides of really building deep relationships with deep trust is that can create a dependency in professional relationships and personal relationships. But the key part is being aware when it's happening and 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 dealing with it, but also to 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 stop it from happening or at least something to give you something to hang your hat on if you sense it's going to happen is that contracting conversation you have either at the outset or recontracting to say actually we need to change our behavior we need to change the relationship at the absolute worst case it's where we exit the relationship because it's not it's not progressing in a way that's 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 appropriate for coaching and mentoring but there's much we can do in the contracting conversations to avoid that Thank you. Thank you, David. Good, great, great question. Great question. Okay. Um, this is probably quite a current one as well. This this one's come from um, Quezi Nero. And their question is, is there any evidence that increased remote, increased remote working has affected the outcomes of coaching and mentoring? I'm not sure about specific evidence. There may be something, something out there. It's not something, something I've seen. And we're probably... These are the kind of things that probably people are looking at. And we may see some direct evidence around that at some point in the future. And there may be something out, out there that I've that I've not just, just haven't seen. I suspect um there will be some there will be some some negative impact in the in the short term because we're finding out, many of us are finding our way in terms of we're operating virtually. Um now, of course, if we're operating virtually, even when we've got the cameras on. And we've both made sure we're in a in a in a quiet and private space. We're still probably losing something that magic of that energy of the face to face relationship. But it doesn't mean it can't happen. What what I'm concerned about is where as organisations and teams start to work more more virtually, we say, well, we can't do coaching then because coaching doesn't work virtually. I think you can still use the principles and use those behaviours and ask those questions and show that you are listening display empathy, agree goals, commit to your actions, you know, recontract where you need to and celebrate successes can all happen virtually. All right. We have to, again, we, we, we can, those, those skills are transferable. So we shouldn't use the virtual world as a reason not to. We should just recognize that it brings some additional challenges and think about how we overcome them, but also get some feedback and, and, and look at the research as it comes in to, to see what advice that, that we can get from other external sources. Okay, thank thank you, Phil. Um, and another one here from um, a, a leader. It's a kind of two part question. Um, first question she says is, is how often should we meet for coaching? Um, and what are the guidelines on this? And secondly, when when do we ask for feedback from our mentee 
on our method of men of mentoring, which I think is quite interesting. Well. Um, so first first part of that question, how often should we meet for coaching? Um, again, it's something that you should agree within, you should agree in the contracting phase at the outset of the coaching relationship. Um, because it, it, it might depend on what it is the what it is you're trying to achieve, okay? Because that might be a sh- that might be a short term goal, medium term, or long or long term goal, or combination of. We also have to recognise the reality. All right, it might be perfect world. We should we can meet for an hour every week, but perhaps that's not that's not going to work. And actually, if we if we commit to something, we're not going to be able to commit to, and we start cancelling, then that kind of erodes the trust and erodes the value of the relationship. So at the outset, we should we should say, well, what's what's you know what's going to work for us in terms of what we're trying to achieve the timeline that's required to achieve that um and then therefore align that with the reality so if it's a, if we if it's a you know i want to achieve something and it, it needs to be done in the next six months um and it would be brilliant if we could have a conversation every once an hour every week on that where we take some actions and we review it but the reality is that's not going to happen let's commit to every fortnight or once a month but regularly review that you know maybe as part of the of the of the, the the ongoing contracting that you do in the in the in the coaching sessions is that we say do we need to meet more do we need to meet less can we have a do, is there a value in an extra some extra sessions as we get closer to deadline so keep it keep keep it as part of the conversation but whatever you agree to you have to be able to commit to because that's kind of linked to the link to the trust and then the question about mentee about when we ask for feedback um again i would i would be asking for for, for, for feedback right from the outset you know in the contracting phase with with us building that rapport building that trust building that relationship we can talk and we can share where our strengths are where our preferences are what our style is like um and ask for feedback right at the outset to say how do you think that will be for you um as we go through the process and you understand their preferences perhaps you're going to give them some feedback on on how it's working for you in in return and you might agree to say okay you know what um i'm going to try and change my style i'm going to try and take take a different approach but let's let's try something different to see if we've got we can deepen and build and and add some add some flexibility to this mentoring relationship but i would be asking for, for feedback right from the outset in terms of how you've how you've how you've you've articulated how you like the process to go during the men, during the mentoring relationship but also regularly ask for feedback not in a kind of every 10 minutes needy way so how am i doing is this okay for you but just as a way that 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 both parties recognize is about making sure that the mentor mentee relationship is as effective as it can be all of the time okay fantastic um thank you phil uh, a few more here i'm just i'm conscious of time as well um so interesting one here from uh Ka, um, from kai ming chang um mentoring is exhausting work how can a person know their own limits and pace themselves effectively so that their effectiveness is not lost yeah and recognizing the reality here you know we're talking i think you know i i, I agree with you mentoring can be quite exhausting but we've also got to align that and balance that with all of the other uh, responsibilities that we have in our lives, both professionally and personally. Okay, so again, if we're establishing the mentoring relationship, we need to commit to what we can do. All right. So if we if we if we've got a if we've got a hugely busy 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 task load in terms of our work life and, and a busy personal life. And we try and commit to something that we that we're just not going to be able to keep up to, and it's going to exhaust us, and it's going to and it's going to it's going to impact on our resilience levels, and therefore we'll, we'll reduce our effectiveness as a coach. It's no good for us, and it's also no good no good for the person that we're mentoring. So at the outset, we we make sure that we can only we, we only commit to what we can do, and that's part of the contracting part of the kind of the, the agreement that you would have with both parties. But also I think it's about noticing what's going on for you as well. So notice if, if you are the kind of person, and by the way, I am, I've done this lots, you know, for years and years now, but I actually find coaching and mentoring, I hope I'm quite good at it, but I do find it very tiring. It takes a lot of energy out of me. So I know that. So I try to, I try where I can to manage my timetable accordingly. I know I'm better in the morning, so I try to have my coaching sessions and my mentoring sessions in the morning. All right. I also know 
that if I've carried out a, a, a coaching session where I know it's going to be a really powerful conversation and sometimes we're really going to get into the nitty gritty of, of, of what's going on for someone, it will it will take a lot from me. So I try to make sure that that where I can, and I know there's a reality sometimes, but where I can, that whatever my activity post that mentoring conversation is is not so de demanding on my energy level so I can manage my own my own energy and my own resilience as I, as, I, as, the, as the relationship develops. And notice if you need a break, you know, and you're contracting, say, you know, as from time to time, we might have some conversations that where we might, we might both need a break. Let's, let's say right at the outset, if that happens, let's be able to be open and honest with each other and say, let's just have a little, let's have a, let's have a little break. Okay. Because you need to be for them, you need to be as resilient as, and, and have as much energy as you can to be able to do it. But you need to do it for you as well. All right. Of course, we want, we're putting our coach or the person we're mentoring first. But we want the relationship to be sustainable. We don't want it just to be successful for a few sessions. We want it to be something that, that we can both get benefit and the business can get benefit over the long period. So notice and understand what's going on from, for you. Recognize what you need to do to maintain those energy levels. And also get additional support from your peers, from your family, from your friends about what you that they can do to help you be as effective as you can in that relationship where you can. Brilliant. Thank you, Phil. Um, I'm, I'm, there's still some questions still to go through, but I, I might just try and pick the last one here. Um, and apologies if you did mention this in this slide. I didn't think you did. Someone just wants to know, uh, uh, Oliver, Oliver Drozd, what's the main difference, the main one? between coaching and mentoring great question oliver one that always comes up in 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 the, in the training sessions and there are many differences so and i'm conscious of the time one i'll give you try to give you a, a shortish answer mentoring is nearly always 100 99 of the time mentoring will be, will be a relationship where the person who is the mentor has a greater level of skill or experience than the person who is being mentored often within the same organization or within the same in uh, and, and um, but almost always within the same industry okay so it's that person passing on their their skill their experience to the person who's being mentored where in the in coaching although that often is the case where they have the co person be coaching has a has a higher level of skill or experience it isn't an absolute necessity because coaching is much more about a conversation that recognizes that both parties that the, sorry that the person being coached has a level of skill has a level of experience already and the and the skill of the coach is to draw out those 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 solutions or those decisions or those or that thinking about what to do next with a particular task or development of a particular skill rather than the, the coach showing them and telling them how they should do things so an example a sporting example tiger woods for most of the the last 25 years not maybe the last few years has been the greatest golfer on the planet okay so but he has all would always have had a coach now his coach would not have been better at golf than him all right but there is still value in that relationship because the coach can help him to see how he makes use of his skill on the golf course or the way that he swings a club or the way that he manages the golf course in a, in a, in a different way using a different lens, all right? So mentor nearly always has a higher degree of skill or experience. The coach often does, but not always. Apologies, I appreciate that was a much longer answer than I said I was gonna give, but hopefully that gives you gives you some context. All right, fantastic, Phil. I think, I think we'll, we'll leave it there. Um, just to say, uh, you know, I'm, I've been reading through the responses and everybody is saying um, how interesting they found this, uh, Phil, you've given them some nice hints and tips, um, you know, and it was very well delivered. So, yeah, fantastic feedback from, from the attendees as well. So That's thank great. you, John. For yeah, thank you. And thanks for everybody, as I said, thanks for everybody to, for, uh, to everybody for attending. Thanks to you, Dan, and also to Kirsty, who does great work in the background. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you.